So I've been fortunate enough to spend a couple of days now with a Panasonic G9 here in New York and I feel like I'm really starting to get an impression about what this camera is all about. So in this video I'm going to give you my personal take on a few of its features. So let's talk about the sensor of this camera first. It's got a 20.3 megapixel live mass micro four thirds sensor, which is the same as was found in the GH5. Apart from this time, Panasonic say that it's got a 25% increase to the dynamic range in the files that it captures, and also it's gonna capture a lot more fine detail at mid to high level ISOs. Now, I'm gonna to be totally straight here. I've not always been that confident in some of the entry level micro four thirds models because of their sensors. Occasionally, you know, when you zoom into 100% on the files, I wasn't all that convinced at the fine detail that was there. However, this camera is totally different. When I've dropped files of, you know, some of the tower blocks and things that I've been taking and looked at every little window in the scene, you know, the detail really is there. So if you're a micro four thirds user and you're looking to predominantly shoot stills and not video, this camera is really gonna tick your boxes. It's, it's really quite impressive. Now two standout features of this camera are its autofocus speed and its burst shooting capabilities. They're two areas which are really gonna to appeal to sports and wildlife shooters. Now earlier this week, I had the chance to shoot some uh, ice skaters as they were going around a ring and this camera did brilliantly. You know, the tracking system really can perform. Probably I would say better than any micro fill thirds camera that I've used before. There were points where there were subjects in the foreground, subjects in the background, everybody's moving and the camera still managed to hold focus focus on the subject that I'd originally focused on. And in terms of that burst shooting, 20 frames per second is possible with both continuous tracking and auto exposure. If you, uh, you want even faster speeds, then 60 frames per second is possible with that focus locked on the first shots. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. I think perhaps only the Sony A9 can even come close to that at the moment. Now from time to time as a photographer, you might find yourself in a shooting situation with some really tricky light conditions and a location where you're either not allowed to use a form of stability like a tripod or a monopod, or you just don't have one close to hand. When that happens, you really need a camera and lens with some good image stabilization built in. And thankfully, the G9 has that. In fact, I'd go as far to say as it's probably my favorite feature on this device. It's dual IS image stabilization system that's built in can compensate for six and a half stops of camera shake. And that allows you to get away with some truly ridiculous shutter speeds, even when handheld shooting this camera. I've taken a few shots at one tenth of a second, one fifth of a second, and when I've dropped them on my computer, they've looked pretty tack sharp. Now the GH5 was a fantastic camera, but its design really was aimed at those kind of hybrid video and still shooters. All its controls weren't quite as intuitively placed as they could have been for a stills photographer, but that's changed a little bit on the G9. There's now a nice big top panel display where you can quickly check your settings. All the dedicated buttons are in the places you'd probably expect to find them with lots of options for customization as well. There's that frame advance rate switch there at the top. You know, it's gonna keep all your settings much closer to hand, which is great great for when you're shooting out in the field. Now one area where this camera does fall just slightly short of its flagship sibling, the GH5, is predictably video. This is very much a stills camera with video functions and not a video camera. That said, it can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of its rivals. It can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. It's just that it's not 10-bit now, it's 8-bit. It's been fantastic to explore a new city with this camera, and the G9 has really won me around during this trip. It's just got so many great features. If you're a micro four thirds shooter who's looking to upgrade to a camera that's really gonna allow you to tackle tricky subjects like sports and wildlife, it's gonna tick a lot of boxes. And the same goes, if you're looking at mirrorless cameras for the first time and you want something that you can pair up with a lens that's gonna allow you to tackle those subjects, but it's gonna be a lot smaller than a DSLR setup, then the G9 again could be the camera for you. For more information about the G9, visit wex.co.uk.